All right, coming to the stage is a good friend of ours here at Dry Bar. Tours all over the country. Please welcome the very funny internet sensation, Rodney Norman. Hey, Chuck Norris. Hey. A little, uh, sorry, I'm a little, uh, a little shaken up here. Uh, on the way here, we were almost in a car accident. It would have been a pretty serious car accident, too, but fortunately, at the last second, I managed to um, change my mind. <laughs> so that was good. No, it's good to be back here in Utah. Thank you, that was overwhelming. No, I, I understand, I grew up in Utah. I know, we are not a proud people. You meet people from elsewhere and they're pretty excited about wherever there is. You know, people from Colorado, they're, they're extremely excited about Colorado, like them. <laughs> what part of uh, the beautiful state of Colorado are you from? Colorado Ah. You get Colorado twice in that one. <laughs> that's, how, that's how awesome it is, right? Because people in Colorado are like, Colorado's the most beautiful state in the Union because we have the mountains and the plains and you can see them at the same time. Montana has big skies, but I think our skies are just as big. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, like Californians, you can't get them to shut up for five minutes. Oh, look at <laughs> Everything we do in California is so much better than what you do here. I can't believe you guys, this is the stupidest state ever, and I wish you did everything like we do in California, because everything you do here is stupid. Your freeways are stupid. We have the best freeways in the world. We got like 18 lanes and we can get every single car in the state of California on our freeways. And we do it twice a day. And we have a uh, California emission standard so you can suck on your exhaust and it's good for you. We have the best hamburgers in the entire world. We have In-N-Out burgers. And I know you have In-N-Out burgers too, but it's not the same. It's not the same In-N-Out burgers as in California because the California burgers are much so much better than the ones made in Utah because you guys screw it up. <laughs> well, to all you Californians who are displeased, please go back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at this point in time, Californians are basically just refugees. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. But they're very excited about it. But see, Utahns, we're not like that at all. Utahns, when we introduce ourselves and tell you where we're from, we apologize. <laughs> it's like, yeah, for Utah. Sorry. I didn't mean to bring it up. But think about it. Two things that you should not bring up when you meet somebody for the first time, politics and religion. You mentioned Utah, you just threw both of them right out there. <laughs> uh -huh. you pick it up and deal with it. Of course, uh, my favorite thing when they uh, find out from Utah, of course, you know what I'm talking about, the, uh, oh, you're from Utah, you must be a Mormon. <laughs> Now, whether you are or you aren't, the appropriate response every time is, why, yes, I am. Would you like to know more? <laughs> because that shuts them down faster than anything. It's very effective. Very effective. Of course, grow, growing up in Utah, a little different than most places. You pick up some idiosyncrasies growing up in Utah. Like to this day, I cannot sit through a boring meeting without this uncontrollable desire to eat Cheerios from a Ziploc baggie. <laughs> yes. Now, if you don't know why that was funny, please find someone who did. 
We have a very special message that we would like to share with you. Very good. But no, I do love, I, I moved away from Utah be, because you can. You, you, you do know that, right? It's, it's a choice. But no, I, I, I love coming back to Utah for one simple reason that I think it's pretty easy to see because uh, I'm an adrenaline junkie. And, you know, that, because that's one of the other things people think about you if you're from Utah, that you're a skier. You ever get that? You're a skier? Well, where's our skiers at? Oh, Colorado. Oh, surprise. Um, Colorado. And then, of course, there's snowboarders. Where's the snowboarders at? Because okay. for some reason you guys think you're different. We are not skiers. I hate it when people think that. No one else cares. You, you know that, right? It's, whatever. Well, look, you skiers, snowboarders, I have a lot of respect for you guys, because I'll be honest with you, that going down a mountain at 100 miles an hour, that takes a lot of something I don't have. Money. <laughs> uh, I grew up poor, so we used to go tubing. Tubing. You remember tubing? Yes. Now that's pure adrenaline. You know why? No steering mechanism. And the braking system involves a tree or a parked car. Yes. It's faith building activity. That's what that is. In fact, we used to go bizzing. You ever go bizzing? You ever did this? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Take an inner tube, tie over the rope around the around tube. And then the other end of the rope tied on the bumper of the truck. And we'd all hop on the inner tube, and then Dad would drive us around on the icy roads. Now, I, I know it sounds dangerous, but I assure you, we took every safety precaution available to us because even before we've started, we always um, had, a, had a prayer. <laughs> That way, we had the protection of the spirit. <laughs> but if someone did get hurt, obviously, it was just God's will. <laughs> so. No, but to get to my adrenaline fix, all I need to do is come to Utah and drive on I-15. <laughs> that is the best. People just don't understand because half the people on the freeway uh, think they're going to get discovered and be in the next Daytona 500. <laughs> and everybody else is, I don't know, looking for parking. <laughs> we love I-15 so much, we just tear it up and rebuild it every three years. And of course, the UDOT has this, uh, this special thing they do for us because they have to shift the lanes around for uh, the new construction. And so they put, so they paint new lines, but they still leave the old lines from the other lanes. It's a faith building activity. It's awesome. My, fa my, my favorite thing about Utah drivers is the fast lane Gestapo. You know what I'm talking about? The people who get in the passing lane and just do the speed limit. It's adorable. Because you know what they're thinking. Or, you know, like, um, I am going just as fast as you're allowed by law. I don't understand what the problem is. But you want, you want to ride up alongside them as you're passing them, right? And give them the look, you know, the... Uh... <laughs> but they will not give you the satisfaction of the eye contact. <laughs> they will sit there with their hands at the 10 and the 2, or the uh, that condescending attitude on their face of, 
not only are you in fact speeding, but you are also passing on the incorrect side. <laughs> For I am the defender of all that is true and right, and you shall not pass! I had to work that one in because of the beard. <laughs> now, the other fun thing is, uh, like we've had for the last couple of days since I've been back, uh, uh, the cloud cover across the mountain range. That's awesome. Because half the people are like, I can't see the mountains. I don't know which direction I'm going. <laughs> Am I going north or south? I have no idea. I, need a, I don't have a gps -y thing either. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I might have been up in Ogden. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll get in the middle lane and slow down to 20. <laughs> and I'll put on my flashers to warn everyone <laughs> that there is incremental weather. <laughs> no, it's fun. There's, there's another thing about, okay, Colorado. You guys might have seen this. Who, who else is not from uh, here originally? Who's... Moved in. Really? Snowboarder? Where are you from? Arizona. And you snow you're really rich. Because you, you have to travel to the snow. All right, Arizona, where back there, where are you guys from? Oh, sweet, what part? Near Charlotte. Where at? I know where Hickory is. I got some family in Lake Norman, my brother. I used to live in Jacksonville, a little town called Hubert. <laughs> Just showing off my language skills. <laughs> That's awesome. What brings you to Utah there, North Carolina? Ah, Stevens Henniger. <laughs> so, It's world renowned. <laughs> it's awesome. You, you cougar? You cougar. <laughs> Let me guess. Utah Valley? Ah. Uh, that's adorable. Well, thanks for joining us. Well, here, you, got, you might know this North Carolina, Colorado. Uh, where is it? Oh, oh, yeah, Arizona. Um, might have noticed when you moved to Utah, uh, Utahns are not particularly fond of the use of the turn signal. You caught on to that one? Okay, on behalf of every native Utahn, I would like to take this opportunity to explain. <laughs> the problem with using your turn signal in Utah is that the majority of the people behind you take it as a personal challenge. <laughs> it's like, hey, that dude's trying to get off on the next exit. I'll speed up, I'll slow down, I don't care. How dare you try to get in front of me in a courteous manner. I was just ignorant. ignorant. There's also this other thing that I, 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 I just, as a state we need to come together and just put an end to this practice that's going on here. Maybe we could make it as a ballot initiative because our legislature seems to respect those around here. Um, <laughs> But can we please, for the love of all that is holy in the universe, can we please stop putting traffic circles in Utah? <laughs> now they work, yes, roundabouts. They work well elsewhere, even in North Carolina, right? Why do they work well elsewhere? Because they inv involve courtesy and forethought. <laughs> Have you seen a group of Utahns at a traffic circle for the first time? It's like a Mormon youth group walking into a Starbucks. <laughs> Excuse me, do you have any Stevens hot cocoa? <laughs> Just, 
Now, is there, is there coffee in the coffee cake, or is it just coffee cake because it goes with the coffee? You know, I'll just have a muffin. No, I, like, I, got, I got no problem. I, I, love, <clears throat> I love growing up in Utah. I love going to church. I really did. I had a great Sunday school teacher many years. She was awesome. She always had lesson plans. She always had visual aids. You know, she'd bring in the felt board, and she'd have a, you know, whole story going on, you know, had the whole hero's journey going on every week. I mean, it was perfect, you know, subplots, everything, right? And it was awesome. But every once in a while, she uh, didn't come to class, you know, she, uh, thing, other reasons. So this other dude would always fill in. Always seemed to be the same guy. He was a little cocky. Never, never had anything planned. Just showed up with the book. Just kind of wing it. One time, he, though he comes in, he didn't have the book. He just walks in and goes, <clears throat> all right, tell you what we're going to do. Uh, for this lesson, all we're going to do is you're just going to uh, throw out any question you have about anything you want to ask about life, about church, about gospel, anything you want to ask. You ask it now, and I'm going to give you an honest answer here right now. And you know, we're all, you know, 10. We're just, <laughs> just like, uh. Finally, I'm like, excuse me? Yes, Brother Norman. Uh, hey, um, so, is, is, God, is God omnipotent? Well, of course. Okay, well, is God, is God omniscient? These are pretty big words for a ten-year-old, <laughs> but yes. Well, okay. So if okay, so if God, if God is all powerful and He's all knowing, would He not know what I'm going to do before I do it? And then if He lets me to do it, even though He has the power to stop me from doing it, would not then anything I do at that point in time just become God's will, thus making the free agency an illusion? Maybe we should just go ahead and play hangman. <laughs> What's really cool about this moment that's going on in this room right now is that at least half of you are thinking to yourself, I wonder if he's still active. <laughs> In answer to your in answer to your question, <laughs> don't let the beard fool you. The only reason I have it is to keep myself from getting any weird callings in church. <laughs> when you look like this, whenever. The Bishop Rick calling comes around. My name gets brought up. It's like, oh, Brother Norman. No. <laughs> that for years I had the best calling ever. I was the bell ringer. <laughs> to indicate when class was over, it was my responsibility to leave class a little bit early and go ring the bell. So. If I left class, oh, 30 minutes early, <laughs> that's just me magnifying my calling. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, no, uh, it's been a, been, a, been a fun year. It's been an exciting year. You know, just as a nation, we've all uh, kind of worked out through our differences and come together and started to see an eye and eye. And it's, it's been a... It's a very, very, very exciting time. Uh, for me personally, it was a, well, a momentous year because uh, me and my lovely bride just celebrated 17 years of amazing marriage. Thank you. Thank you. It was, uh, it was thrilling. It was our 28th wedding anniversary. Um, they're not all winners. Um, <laughs> 
No, look, she's the love of my life. She's the only woman I've ever been with, and, uh, and I'm the only man that she's ever been with. Um, I mean, even by Utah standards, that's pretty amazing. Because, um, you know, she was looking for a man that had kept himself clean and pure. Um, technically. Um, and and I, was, I was looking for a woman that had nothing to compare me to. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's, always, it's always weird. I, and, and I'm going to tell this joke because, well, basically this is pretty much the only place in the entire world I can. <laughs> so we got, we got married in the, you know, the special place. And it was, it was pretty awesome because, you know, we're, sell, we're, we're there surrounded by all of our family and friends that pay tithing. And um, and it's a weird it's a weird time it's a weird it's a weird thing because one it's it's very spiritual it's a very special moment but you know as a young man I don't know if I should do this. <laughs> Cause you, okay, blame him. <laughs> Cause you know you're sitting there, you know, and, and you know grandparents are there, and mom and dad are there, and, and you're, you're like, all right, this is a very spiritual moment. Meanwhile, in the back of my head, all I can think is, oh yeah. <laughs> Getting lucky tonight. Yeah. Okay, I'll we'll stop there. Uh, no, it may, it may, it, you know, it's a. Uh, it, m- never mind. <laughs> Listen to the podcast, you'll find out more there. Uh, no, I love her dearly. She's everything to me. In fact, you know, but we're still we're still very active. We still got it, you know. <laughs> after all these years, after all these years, it's still it's not uncommon for me to wake her up at two or three in the morning just to get her to stop snoring. <laughs> so. But we're always looking for, out for each other, and, and that's what you do. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. You know, it's, you got you got to work. Well, as I like to say, love is not something you discover; it's something you build. You know what I mean? It's not you know just find someone, and go, yay, this is it. You gotta you gotta create it. You gotta make it better, right? And. Now, like recently, uh, okay, about a year ago, she started making me take vitamins. I think she was, you know, because I'm getting older and everything. Started making me take vitamins, and I thought she was worried about my health. Uh, turns out, she just appreciates the fact that it turns my urine stream bright yellow. <laughs> so it's easier to tell if I peed on the toilet seat. <laughs> One of those tricks you learn, <laughs> ladies. No, we did have we did have a very spiritual moment, a very special moment. I think every strong relationship needs to have, uh, right? So, who's been married for a long time? That is here. Where are you, where are you guys at? Woo-hoo. That you're willing to admit? Okay. We were. You guys, you just don't want to participate. You don't want to bring any attention to yourselves. You're like. We're not even sure on the numbers at this point in time. We stopped counting. Because a lot of times you ask what the, you know, how long have you been married? And the guy just always automatically goes. <laughs> but you two have been married so long, both of you are just like, shut up. What's not? <laughs> no, but every, every good relationship has to have this moment, right? And here's, here's what happened. It was about a year before all this stuff was going on, right? We were out to dinner. We're sitting across from each other at the table there at the, there, there at the Chili's. I'm not bragging, just where we were. (laughs) 
And, we're, and you're supposed to sit at, across from each other. Have you ever go to a place that has booths and like there's a couple and they're like, they're sitting on the same side in the booth? I always want to walk up to them and go, excuse me, ma'am, are you a hostage? <laughs> Is this, you know, Just order an angel shot and we'll be right over. Um, but no, we're sitting there, and it was, a pure, it was purely magical, purely magical, an amazing experience as we're sitting across from each other, and just out of nowhere, without, without anything to, to bring it on, we just, um, at the same time, looked up from our phones, <laughs> and we had that connection, you know, <laughs> the eye to eye. And as we're staring into one another's soul, we just, we just had that realization that at this point in our lives, neither of us could do any better. <laughs> so we're just gonna stick it out. <laughs> Good. Good. So we recently, we thought she was pregnant, which is, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so we have, the deal is, okay, so we had five kids, but we are going for 10 because we're trying to get into heaven. <laughs> and, but we, and all indications were that she was pregnant, right? And. Uh, I mean, a little up there the years, but you know, still she's in the window, right? And so we, we went and got everything checked and turns out that she's not pregnant, um, which is very disappointing, especially to me, because it means that she's just fat. I didn't say I didn't like it. <laughs> what is your problem, people? All you oohers. Ooh, you don't even know her. <laughs> ah. In spite of what you might think, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> There's, okay, I can't, I'll just move on. <laughs> now, I'm trying to make this world a better place. I thought, I was really excited about the winter solstice thing, weren't you guys? <laughs> no? Look, for the last eight months on TikTok, <laughs> there was a big build up to the winter solstice, right? because this is a special winter solstice, right? Because all the planets were lining up, right? And we're issue, we're entering into the age of Aquarius, right? You know what I'm talking about? Been singing about it since 69. <laughs> Peace, love, and understanding gonna guide the planet. Here we are. Been okay, look, I've been planning for the end of the world since I was a, since I was a child. I was brought up that at any moment it's over. Right? I mean, the whole, the whole, my whole childhood, it, we, we, were, we, were, we were basically establishing a bunker <laughs> in the house, five gallon buckets of wheat everywhere. <laughs> we, were, we were ready. Mom was ready. We were ready. I remember one time having a conversation with my mother. I said, she's going over all the different beans that we have, with navy beans and lentil beans and beans, just beans, lots of beans. And I said, uh, Mom, we've got to make sure we get some guns. And she says, yeah, because we've got to defend our, our, our stock. I said, no, because when we get to just eating beans, I want to shoot myself. <laughs> I 
But they, it's like they had us all worked up. That, you know, that there were, any moment of the apocalypse is going to happen. We, we, my whole childhood, Russians were coming. We were always, uh, we always had to plan. We always had to be ready for the Russians. We were ready for nuclear war at any moment. And we were like, uh, at least uh, once every couple months, we'd do these drills. We would hide under our desks. In fact, to this day, I still try to collect all those desks I can find at antique stores because apparently that's the only thing that's going to protect you from nuclear holocaust. <laughs> desks. It's going to save us all. And then uh, Russia fell apart and Gorbachev just turned out to want to go on a speaking tour and that was the end of that. And then the next thing come along, all right, all right, 2000, right? All the computers are gonna rise up and kill us all. <laughs> right, Y2K, it's like, all right, here we do, let's bring it on. Just turned out we just had to turn them on and turn it back on again. <laughs> now, fix that problem. And then the next real good one, 2012, the Aztec calendar thing, right? December 21st, uh, it was uh, the Gadsick calendar, obviously they had everything figured out because, you know, they died off as the terror. Anyway, um, I won't go into that one. Um, but they had a calendar figured out, right? And uh, we get there and nothing. It was, it was a letdown, I'll be honest with you. I mean, the entire collapse of society is kind of, well, my retirement plan is based on it. But we get to the, the, the cow. Apparently, what had happened was the guy making the calendar just ran out of space and was just like, hey, uh, I'm out 5,000 years. You guys think that's good? <laughs> so that, but, but now, okay, so now here's the, so now we're getting the build up. And then now what they're saying was the calendar was messed up. And that we were wrong about it being 12, and it was actually supposed to be 20. So 2020, that was the that, that and then with the salt, the line, the plant. This was the big one. This was the big one. This was it was supposed to go down, right? Something big, magnificent was going to happen. So everybody on TikTok was telling you how to get ready to enter into the fifth dimension. We're going to resonate as spiritual beings, move into the fifth dimension, right? And I kept asking, okay, what does that what does that mean, the fifth dimension? Right. And they're like, well, you know, two dimension is like a piece of paper, and then three dimension has more size. And I'm like, okay, but what does it fit? To, what, what, what does it mean? Well, it's just, you know, you just, you know, you just think about stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, you might sit there going, I don't, what kind of answer is that? That's the best one I got. But I was doing all the stuff, grounding, I was grounding, I was going out without my shoes on, into the grass, right? Getting grounded, staring at the sun, right? <laughs> it's, uh, not all the time, sundown, it was sundown, <laughs> where it's kind of half there, then you stare at it for a few seconds, and then you breathe deep through your nose or mouth, and you sink it, you start humming at 528 hertz, and you, you know what I mean? You start, you know, because you, you make your water happy, and then you drink the happy water, and then it, it, it you know, you, you do, I'm doing it all right. And I'm barefoot, and a neighbor every day, every afternoon, I'm doing, neighbors think I'm nuts. And <laughs> hey, look, it's my yard. I can do what I want. <laughs> if I want to stand out here beating drums while I'm naked, it's my business. What are you, what are you staring at me for in my yard? I'm up to date with my condo association fees. Get off my back, right? <laughs> Doing the whole thing. I was all ready. I was right prepared. So we're coming. We're just, you know, aliens are going to show up. Or, you know what I mean? It's, we're ready. We're ready. And we get there. So did you guys, did you guys stare at it? What, what happened, right? We're over at my in-law's house. And, and I was like, hey, you guys want to go look at the, the thing? All right, so we're gonna go out there and I'm, you know, we're all gonna harmonize with the universe and <laughs> what, something. We went out there and we're, we're standing in my father in law's backyard and we're like, which one is it? <laughs> what? I think it's that one over there. 
Well, that, that doesn't look like one big one. That just kind of looks like two small ones next to each other. Is that it? And then finally my mother-in-law broke the silence with, I got a pot roast going, you guys. <laughs> but I've been planning for this moment my whole life. And all I got was pot roast. <laughs> Didn't get to see aliens or anything. This is dumb. This is dumb. But... So here we are, so now I have to try to come up with a retirement plan. There's nothing, you know, I thought, you know, I, was, I had hope for the Civil War. I, you know what I mean? But we're, let's face it, we, back, back in the days when they had the Civil War, people were ready to go to war just because there wasn't really anything else going on. The reason we've been able to avoid civil war now, why? TikTok. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'd go to war, but eh. Seems like a lot of work. <laughs> but no, I am. I am trying to spread peace, love, joy, and happiness, though, everybody. Uh, like, case in point, case in point. I went to Walmart the other day, and... Um, yeah, I know that, look, I know there's anti-Walmart people in this world, and I want you to know that if you hate Walmart, I hate you. <laughs> but if you work at Walmart, <laughs> I want to I just want to take this opportunity <laughs> to say to you, thank you. Thank you for giving up on your hopes and dreams. <laughs> to help me save 15 cents on a box of Nutter Butters. Thank you for your sacrifice. So anyway, there are... there. Give me a moment. So there I am. I'm in the dog food aisle because I'm getting the jerky treats because they're cheaper than the regular jerky. <laughs> if you start them young, your kids can't tell the difference. So, so someone's there, you know, in these trying times, and just, you know, I just, just want to share a little human connection with my fellow man, right? <clears throat> but uh, in retrospect, um, I, I, I would have probably chosen to say something else. But please understand, nothing but love was intended when I said, <gasps> Ma'am, you must be so excited. When's that baby due? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy was pissed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Overreact much? Mm -hmm. Man. Then there was this. There was this other thing that happened to me. Oh my, oh my goodness! This was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I got to share this with you. I was I went I was I drove down to see some friends of mine in California. If you're okay, if you, okay, see so you have there's California. It's like this. They were in Southern California, so they're like it's right down there. So I drive I drive. Oh, my, and my friends are Tongan. They're uh, Polynesian Tongan. And I, I mention I mention that because there's also an East African tribe that goes by Tongan. But they're they're not related. <laughs> but I, I I didn't want there to be any confusion. <laughs> I'm 
So, so I, I drive there, I drive there, and I get to their house, right? And I pull in the driveway, and as I pull in, they're they're walking out of their house, and they they see me, you know, I get out of the car. They were on their way to a street festival, right? And and it, and it was like. Hey, uh, Rodney, you're, you're kind of here early. We, we, we didn't think you were going to get until later. But we're on our way to, uh, to the street festival. Uh, do you think you want to come with us uh, to the street festival? And I was all like, well, I, I didn't have any other uh, plans. <laughs> that's so funny. You always have the funniest things to say. <laughs> well, do you, do you, do you want do you want to go <laughs> with us? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. That, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> well, should I should I just ride with you guys? Well, we we didn't know you were going to be here, so if, if, well, yeah, you can just yeah, you can just ride with us. I mean, we gotta we gotta take some of the stuff out of the back seat and put it in the way back, but there's there's still plenty of room, so so that'd be okay, sure. Okay, What's, is it okay if I park here? Are you joking? I can't tell if you're being serious or if you're joking. Yeah, you could park right there. Why, why, couldn't you, why wouldn't you be able to park there? Well, I was just, I was just worried, you know, maybe somebody's parked in the garage and they, you were, might get out later and they couldn't because my car's in the way. You just crack me up so much. <laughs> We've never actually used the garage for the cars. So it was full of food storage. <laughs> okay. So are we? Are you leaving now? Right, right, like, like right, right, right now? Should I just leave my stuff? In, is it going to be okay in the car? Well, it's still a pretty good neighborhood, but I would still, I wouldn't leave any uh, valuable stuff in your car, so if you got anything you know, really expensive, you could take that and put it in the house. You can put it in TK's room. Okay. Just give me a second. End scene. Okay, so we go. The street festival, and we get to the street festival, and there's of course there's more more Tongans, you know, they're friends, and then there were some Samoans, they're also uh, Polynesian, but they do not have uh, a, an African equivalent. <laughs> they just they got a name all by themselves. Some, well, I mean there's Somalians, but they're it's <laughs> it's spelled really different because. Okay, so then there, there was, uh, but there are people from all over the world is, is where I'm going with this, because there are people from like the Philippines, and there was people from Laos and Cambodia and Japan, and uh, people from uh, China, and people from all over South America, Ecuador, Brazil, uh, people were there from uh, Portugal and uh, Puerto Rico, and uh, oh, and uh, there were Mexicans there. There was a lot of, okay, it was mostly Mexicans. <laughs> Mostly makes sense. But my point is, is that nobody cared uh, where anybody was from. Nobody cared about the color of their skin, their religion, their political affiliation, whether or not they believed in flat earth, anything, right? <laughs> it, was just, it was just a bunch of people out having a good time and enjoying each other's company, enjoying each other's music. And as I'm standing there looking around, I was like, this is pretty cool, man. This is what America is all about. We're the great melting pot. Where all the people from all over the world come and enjoy freedom, and, and we were there to celebrate the one race and only race that there is, and that's the human race. And it was a glorious moment. It was also at this moment that I realized that 
I was the only white guy there. It was a little humbling. It's that sudden realization that uh, Well, I guess I'm in charge. <laughs> you guys got a permit for that open flame? <laughs> yeah. What's really cool about this moment is at least Half the audience has been offended. <laughs> but let me point out, there are two groups of people who are offended by that joke. The first group are white supremacists. <laughs> because, in fact, that's who the joke was about. The second group are stupid people who didn't comprehend that it was about white supremacists. <laughs> Whatever group you fall into, you're the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I know you're sitting there going, hey, Rodney, how can we commemorate and remember this evening forever and ever? Well, now you two can relive and share this magic moment with all your family and friends. Yeah. Yeah. There's, we'll be over here. So it's, it's 20 bucks. And so if you guys, if you, feel, if you actually really felt bad about my joke about my wife earlier, this is how you can <laughs> stick it to me because she's the one who gets all the money from this. <laughs> so vote your conscience. So that, okay, so we got that. And then we got, so I, I don't know, I don't know if you guys are aware that I'm internationally famous. Thank you. It was time. No, okay, so what happened was, uh, I was in my home in Connecticut where I reside. And we were flying back here, right? And we were, we were getting ready to go to the airport and my wife was taking some time. And uh, so I'm, I'm there looking at the Facebook, and one of my friends posted a stupid question. And it was so stupid that I thought, I'm going to answer this. <laughs> so I decided to answer it with a stupid video. That video has been seen over 100 million times all over the world. I would read, I would, and, and, okay, so I don't know if you guys, just, okay. But anyway, here's the poster. <laughs> that commemorates that video. And we have these available. These are these are ten bucks. <laughs> and I've had somebody got, got mad at me online, they're like, Why are you selling stuff? That's terrible. You're ruining uh, the organic movement of happiness. Well, to those of you who are upset that I'm making money, screw you. <laughs> I've got bills to pay. <laughs> All right. Now, now, if you're not going to buy anything, I'm not. We're not. Uh, you, I don't care. Like, if you want to buy something cool, thank you. If you want to just get a picture and tell me how awesome I am, I'm, I'm cool with that too. But we want to give all of you, we have these stickers. You know, all right? <laughs> this, is, this is no idea. 
So let the world know how you feel about everything. And uh, these are uh, normally, normally these are $1,000. <laughs> They're like Bitcoin. They, the longer you hold on to it, the more valuable it becomes. But because you guys have been so awesome, you guys, you just grab one on your way out for free. Every one of you, thank you. So before, uh, before I go, I just, uh, you know, I've often wondered why it is, as I look around the world and I see how screwed up everybody is, I often wondered, how is it that I am such a well-adjusted adult? <laughs> I finally figured it out one day, and I think it was because of my childhood. It's hard to tell now, but I was a fat kid. Where's my fellow fat kids at? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, brother. We'll get together and check our blood sugar later. But uh, it was not easy being a fat kid when I was a fat kid. Now it's easy to be a fat kid. I know because I got three of them. <laughs> um, Because now, you know, when kids show up to school now, it's like, um, it is so amazing that you're here because cause you bring diversity to the group. And it's so important to bring, that you bring diversity because when you bring diversity and we combine it with all the other children's diversity, it makes each and every one of us more diverse. But you know, more importantly than that, by being bigger than the other children, you make them feel better about their bodies. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> yeah, not when I was a kid. I was a kid called fat butt, wide load, lard ass. Yeah, teachers back then. <laughs> Now, being a fat kid back then, only one place you could go shopping, uh, Sears. Yeah, you want to press the ladies, wear some husky. The only place you could find a pair of boys pants with a 36-inch waist with a 14-inch inseam. I was 17 years old till I realized my mother had just been buying me men's shorts. My body type was Weeble. <laughs> and even worse than that was going to playgrounds. They were horrifying when I was a child. If you go to the playgrounds now, everything well built, low to the ground, easily accessible for every single child. You can even get wheelchairs on them. They're very inclusive. They're all set up according to feng shui standards. So there's nice chi energy flowing around all over in there. Bright, cheerful colors everywhere so that every child can resonate from every seven chakra. <laughs> Antibacterial coatings on every surface, so if little Timmy starts gnawing on the bars, let him go, it's good for his gums. <laughs> Not my playgrounds though, no. These were horrifying things. They were built by old dudes from the Works Project Administration, a government program that gave jobs to dudes that couldn't find jobs anywhere elsewhere because of the Depression era. So when these guys built this stuff, they wanted it to teach you a damned lesson. <laughs> they left edges. It was all made of stainless steel. You couldn't look directly at the playground equipment during daylight or you would go blind. So, You had to double layer in the winter time because if your exposed skin accidentally touched the middle, you would stick. <laughs> During the summer, you had to find a stupid kid to go down the slide first to see if he would burn. <laughs> hey, it's only a second degree. Keep your knees up. Let's go. <laughs> and none of these slides exist anymore. They all got taken down because of OSHA standards and FAA flight patterns. 135 feet in the air, you had to chew gum or your ears would pop. <laughs> to get to the top of this thing, you had to climb a ladder that was on a 91 degree angle. <laughs> had these um, 
steal great steps. You remember those things? If you slipped on the way up, you had American Standard to print it on your forehead for a couple days. It's like, hey, I'm learning Braille. And then as fat kids, if we could actually make the ascent, when we got to the zenith, in order for us to go down the slide, we had this horrifyingly embarrassing situation because the only way we could actually go down the slide is if we went sideways. Because you could only get one cheek into the channel. Plus you had to keep a leg free to scissor kick to keep your momentum going. You didn't want to get stuck on that hump in the middle because then they had to bring the jaws of life to get you out of there. You get down to the bottom, it was a four and a half foot drop to the ground. And it wasn't anything soft or fuzzy to land on. No, it was asphalt. Asphalt. We had monkey bars 19 feet at the apex over asphalt. That's why when I was growing up, nobody had ADHD because you had to stay focused. You guys have been delightful. Thank you so much for being here. Keep it going for Rodney Norman. Did you guys have fun tonight? We had a lot of fun too. Check us out at drybarcomedy.com. We always bring the best comics to Utah. You guys are going to exit out the front doors on your way out. Say hi to Rodney. Get a sticker. You guys have a good night and drive safe. <laughs>